Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. I'm the owner of Little Inklings Design. Today's video is really exciting because we're going to be talking all about the upcoming Always Fully Booked Planners. This has always been a really highly anticipated video. I know a lot of you really look forward to this every single year, so I'm really happy that you're joining me today. We're going to talk all about the 2025 planners and some new things and some changes and we're going to do a flip through so you can see everything that's coming and we're also going to be talking about the undated version of that planner. If you're familiar with our planners or you've seen these videos in the past before, last year we introduced an undated version of the always fully booked planner and I split that announcement into two and I did a flip through for the dated planners and I did a flip through for the undated planners. This year we're just going to do one video so everything will be here. I'm going to leave timestamps in the description below so if there's something you want to reference again later you'll have. So as I mentioned today we're going to be talking all about the always fully booked planners. These are reading journals that are also agendas and it's a product that I've been making in my shop for the last eight years which is just crazy, mind-boggling information. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I can continue to do this every year and that's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for all of your support. I'm gonna just jump right into this because we have a lot of stuff to go over. A lot of this will be pretty repetitive if you are a returning customer or you've seen our products before, but I like to go over everything all in one place. So it's all there and easily accessible. So first things first, let's talk about the covers. If you follow me on my socials, you've probably already seen the covers, but I just love these new covers so much that I just want to share them again and again. So uh, if you haven't seen them already, I'm going to go over them now. And if you've already seen them, you just get to see them again. First up, we have the dated cover versions. So we're doing two dated covers this year. So first up, we have the color version, which looks like this. It is kind of inspired by like retro light up signs. When I showed this on my socials, a whole bunch of you started referring to this as the Vegas cover, which I just love. I think that's really cute. But we just have a quote, books are my happy place. That looks like a sign with some palm trees. It does have rose gold foiling here in the lettering and rose gold corner protectors. This coil is actually gold, but it will be rose gold in the final product. They just didn't have the rose gold for this sample. That is the color version. And again, it is the dated version. I always do a color version and then kind of like a black version of the cover. So this is the dated version of the cover. You can maybe tell it was inspired by tarot cards, but I did a little bit of a bookish spin on it. This one has all gold features. Um, there was a little bit of confusion when I shared this on my socials. The actual design is not foiled. It is just printed, but the lettering is foiled. One thing I will say about the new cover designs this year is I tried to go in a completely new direction this year. Last year, I got a couple of comments that my covers were starting to look a little bit repetitive. So I kind of took that to heart and wanted to challenge myself to try and do something completely different after eight years of doing this. It's a little bit challenging to continue to try and come up with brand new ideas year after year, but I'm really, really pleased with these new covers. I absolutely love all of them and uh, the reception of them has been wonderful. So thank you so much for loving them just as much as I do. So again, these are the two dated cover designs. And the dated versions will come with either a horizontal or a vertical interior layout. You can choose each cover will be available in both. Next, we have the undated planners. First up, um, because you've already seen this one, this same cover will also be available as an undated planner, meaning you can use it any time of the year. You can start it whenever you want. You could use it for any year. It doesn't, it's not specific to 2025, but I anticipated that this one would be kind of a favorite of customers. So I decided to do it as a dated version and an undated version. Thus, the undated doesn't have the year down here. The undated planners come available in a dashboard layout only. Finally, we have one last cover, which is the color version of the undated planner. And it looks like this. This was the one that I was uh, initially the most nervous about doing, and it turns out I didn't have anything to be nervous about because so many of you absolutely loved this cover, so thank you so much for that. I personally really love this cover. I think it's really fun with all the stamp genres, and I had a lot of fun creating this one. It has gold accents, and it does have a pink 
elastic closure. These are the two undated options and again this comes with the dashboard layout which we'll get to when we get to the flip through. So before we jump into all of the like details every year I like to give the same kind of disclaimer and that's that when we get to the flip through you'll probably notice that it's not that much different from the previous year and um, that's just because I'm trying to create a product that you as a customer can rely on and are comfortable with and you know what you're going to get year to year but I do try and make some thoughtful changes every year just to kind of keep it updated and keep it new and fresh so you'll see that again once we get to the flip through and get to some of the new changes uh, but for the most part it's very very similar to the previous year's planner so if you're familiar with that one and liked it then I think you'll like this one we do have one uh, more noticeable difference in the planners which we're going to get to just a little bit later into the details and we'll talk about i did announce it on my socials already but i know that can be easily missed or not everyone follows me on instagram so i'm going to go over that in this video as well Moving on let's get to the pre-order information i'm going to move through this information pretty quickly because it's not that new of information but the pre-order date is going to be october 20th at 11 a.m eastern standard time this is once again a limited pre-order and that just means that it is a pre-order in the sense that you are pre-ordering the product. It's not going to ship right away. These planners will start shipping closer to the end of November, uh, but we say it is a limited pre-order as there is a limited amount available. So if there is a specific cover or layout that you are interested in, I highly recommend ordering as early as you possibly can. I did want to mention that I am doing fewer planners this year. so. Uh, if you want something specific, I highly recommend ordering early. Also, just a note about that, I can never predict which one is going to be the most popular or which layout will be the most popular, so I try my best to anticipate that when I order, but planners are already ordered, so like the numbers are finite. If by chance something does sell out, it will not be back if it is a dated planner, if it is an undated planner, most likely it will come back. One quick note, I've been asked about just a couple of times and it's something I usually include in these videos is the price of the planners. Unfortunately, I don't quite have that finalized just yet, but I know a lot of you have been highly anticipating this video and I didn't want to keep making you wait for it. So uh, the price of the planners, that information will be released at a later date. It will be released before the pre-order date, so don't worry about that, but I don't have it finalized just yet. All I can say for now is it will be similar to last year's price. Last little detail, and this kind of comes to one of the changes in the planner this year, is we're going to discuss the page count of the planners. So this year, the dated planners are 400 pages exactly. Last year they were 376 pages, so this is an increase of 24 pages, which is pretty significant. And the reason for that big jump in increase is we do have some new pages, but also the major reason for that is that we have increased the capacity of the always fully booked planner and how many books it can track. So previous versions of this planner, you could track 120 books. You can now track 150 books with the 2025 version and the new undated version. Really excited about that. So again, 400 pages for the dated version. The undated version is 388 pages, a little bit different just because it doesn't have quite the same things just because of the dated versus undated. We'll get to that in the flip through. Again, this is a 24 page increase from last year. That is all of the information that I have before we get to the flip through. We're gonna turn you around and we're gonna dive into these books so you can see what's inside. Okay, so as you can see, we have the two dated planners here. So that's what we're gonna start with. You can get a closer look at the covers here. I'll show you, again, this coil will not be gold. It's actually gonna be rose gold. But I'll show you the backs of the planners. So you can see those. I'm only gonna dive into one of the planners because they are both the same internally design-wise. The only difference is the weekly layout spread, and I'll show you that once we get to that. We're just gonna take a look at one, but before we do that, I'll just show you the end pages of this one. They look like that. I'm gonna jump into this one. So the end pages on the color version are very similar. They're just a colored version of the bookish doodles. Then we have a sticker sheet. This is the same sticker sheet that was in the previous year's planner. Have our title page, 
uh, yearly overview and our dates to remember. Have our important info and goals page. We come into our reading checklist. This year you have three and a half pages and that comes down to the increase in the capacity. So just for some information in case anyone's wondering, there is 48 spots per spread. We have three of those. And then you also are given one full extra page. So without this extra page, you would have had 144, which is very close to the capacity, but I wanted you to have the full 150. So you actually have more than that with the reading checklist. So you now have a total of 167 spots. That, as you can see, kind of leads into another kind of new development, which is the addition of kind of a mini bookshelf. And that is to lead you into the full bookshelf. And again, that's just to bring you up to the capacity. So you have 160 book spots total. And I also left this spot blank because I figured you could put a title there. You people like to color coordinate either by month or by genre or by star rating. You could make yourself a little key here. The other thing is if you don't read that many books, you could always use this bookshelf for another purpose. Whether you want to track something individually, like maybe you want, want to track a certain genre on this one or a certain format on this one, or if you're part of like a book club or book subscription boxes, it kind of gives you room to separate it if you want to, but if you do read over, then you can just use the whole thing. So this is a look at the brand new bookshelf. It's very similar to what we've done before, but we always like to add new little doodles this year and had a lot of fun with this year's, so I hope you like them too. Following the bookshelf, we move into the book series tracker. We have three quotes pages, and that leads us into a kind of repurposed page. Previously, this would have been the wish list page. We have now changed it to a pre orders page. One feedback that I would get kind of frequently is that you wish there was a spot for pre orders, and while you can track that on the like new releases page, or even some people like to track that on the dates to remember page. I thought having a dedicated space that you could list all of the books that you pre-order as a spot for when the release date is, where you've pre-ordered it from. It's kind of nice to keep track of all the books that are coming to you that you may have ordered months in advance. Um, that also leads into another new page, which is the author backlist page. I first introduced this new page in our newly updated novel companion reading journals and a lot of you requested that it come to the full planner. So it is here and it's actually a two page spread in this one. So you've got double the amount of room. Really fun way to keep track of your favorite authors or uh, some authors like previous works that you wanna get to. It also goes into another new page, which is the books to reread little doodle, which I thought was really fun. That is also another new page, which is the 2025 playlist page, which is definitely open to your interpretation of this page. It has months per little playlist spot. So you could, if you are a big audiobook listener, you could pick your favorite audiobook that you listen to that month. And it's a nice little way to record what your favorite one was. If you're not a big audiobook person, it could be podcasts, your favorite podcast that you listen to that month. If you don't do that either, it could be just music. like a new album that's coming out that month or a new song that you've been really loving that month, something that encapsulates what that month was to you. There's a lot of room for interpretation there. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, so I'm excited to see what you guys do with it. But I noticed that we've always had a TV and movie tracker page, but we've never really had anything for music or auditory things, so I thought it'd be really fun to incorporate something new this year. That does lead into our movie tracker and our TV tracker. That leads us into our blank books. We've done this for a few years now. Again, a page that's really open to your creativity. You could record book club picks, your favorite book of each month, your top books of the year, selections for book boxes. So many things that you could do with this page. It's really fun to see how you guys use it in a way that fits you. We go into the five star reads and the A to Z challenge. Something new this year that you may notice is we have now added a number sign so one of the prompts that we have added is now to read a book that has a number somewhere in the title so we have the 2025 fully booked reading challenge we've got all new 
prompts this year. That moves us into the on the cover. Again, brand new prompts this year. Uh, but then the reading rainbow and the genre read through the ages and the reading around the world challenge are all the same as they have been in previous years. That leads us into a challenge that is specific to just the dated version of the planner and that's the 25 books in 2025. Basically just pick any 25 books, whether they're books that you own, books that have been recommended to you, any 25 books that you want to come up with for whatever reason. You list them and you try and read them within 2025. Again, this challenge is only in the dated version. Moves us into the reading goal tracker. As you can see, it now fits 152. So it has a little bit more than previous years. These will fit the mini icons that we sell in the shop. Battle of the books. And then we have our kind of chart that again is open to your interpretation. You could track pages, you could track workouts, budget, um, your mood, uh, any kind of habit that you want you tracked on this page there's that moves us into the monthly reading stats one thing we did add to this page was we added a books hauled here so if you want to keep track of that uh, it'd be you could see how many books you're bringing in each month and then a total at the end and again we did the genre tally these pages are just really nice as an overview for your stats and we have the blank pie charts. This is something that you do at the end of the year once you have all of your reading stats for the whole year. So we have pages read in 2025. That leads us into just blank dot grid pages. These are pages you can add in your own reading challenges, you could add in your own graphs, your own go cards. I've seen a whole bunch of ways to utilize blank dot grid pages. So just open to any extra things you want in the front of your planner. And that leads us into a monthly spread, which we're gonna go through. As you can see here, we did have the stamp design also as a page. So if you love this one and don't necessarily want it as a cover, uh, you still get it as an artwork as well. So this is an example of January and the dated versions. You will have a title page here with the month and the tab is also marked with the month and each month has its own color. So then you'll get a full two page spread calendar that is dated for each month that you can use however you see fit. We have our books to read page. One small little change on this one is we have removed the year from the dated planner just because it was a little bit redundant because the whole planner is for a specific year. You could still technically add it in after month if that's important to you. I did keep the month in here I know a lot of you like to use these for pictures or for like videos on Instagram. So uh, I think if you're like taking like a snapshot or video of one page and you want to like record which month that was for, it's a nice way to still have that showing because not, even though it's within a month, it kind of just makes sense if you're sharing it. So the month is still in there. We do have the new releases page. You probably cannot tell in this light and on this video, you can all, like barely tell in person. There are very, very, very faint lines on this page now. It's something that I have been asked about before and I have initially been pretty hesitant to do so. There's a lot of people who like to put like pictures here. Tried to keep it pretty light that it doesn't like disrupt if you want to do something else with this page. Leads us into what a typical weekly spread will look like. As you can tell, this is the vertical layout. So the days are just displayed in a vertical fashion with three boxes and then you've got like lines on the side here and you've got dotted lines on the bottom for any additional extra information you want to show. So I'll show you what a horizontal looks like. Here is an example of what the horizontal will look like. So as you can see, it's the same information just presented in a different format. Each day is horizontally. There's no day breaks in this one. It's just a horizontal thing. And there's a little uh, dotted lines at the bottom here. Can't really fit them both on screen, but we've got the vertical on the top and the horizontal on the bottom. These are layouts I've offered the past couple of years, so nothing has changed with them at all. They're the same sizing exactly of what we've done in the past. One thing I will note, I get asked about this every year, is within each month doesn't align perfectly every time that it doesn't always start on a Monday and end on a Sunday. So you will 
get parts of other months within your month. You're not missing pages. All the dates are there. They're just maybe spread out a little bit different. The rule of thumb is if there's more days in the week of that month, then it will fall within that month. So for example, at the end of January, there's the first two days of February are included in the month of January, but that's because there's five days of the week are January and only two are February. So that will fall in January. If it was the opposite or there's four days of February, it would fall in February. So hopefully that makes sense. The weekly spread, we go into the bookish haul and the reading wrap up and that leads into the doc read and a lined page every month. At the end of every three months, you will have a quarterly check-in. So there's four of these within the planner. I'm not gonna show all of the artwork until at the very end. So if you don't wanna be spoiled for the artwork and you want to save that for when you receive your own planner, you can skip that part. But I will move to the end of the book, the very last quarterly check-in, which leads into the 2025 reading wrap up that leads into a coloring page and our book reviews section. Again, there are enough room for 150 book reviews. And then at the end of the planner, you will have extra dot grid pages and extra lined pages. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that the, none of the planners of this year have a folder. We got a lot of feedback that the folder kind of wasn't being utilized and that they didn't need it. So rather than put it in every single planner and have that extra bulk, what we opted to do was we removed the folder and later in on in this year, we will be releasing snap-in folder pages with a bunch of different designs. So you can choose which one you want or get multiple if you need more space. That way, if you need a folder page, you can have one and you can kind of choose whatever pattern excites you. It's not adding extra bulk if you don't need it. So here's a look at what the dated planners look like. So from here, we're going to move into the undated and go through that really quickly so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so here we have the undated covers and I'm gonna flip you through them so you can see. Uh, these are a close-up of what the covers look like. The end pages are the same on this pink one with the like pink orange books. But we're going to take a look through this one. So we have the undated Boys Willie Book Planner with the black cover and again have the same end pages and the months as stickers. I'm going to go through this one really quickly because there's a lot of overlap between the two planners. So I'll just point out what's different. The first being the dates to remember page. This doesn't have a yearly overview because it can be used for any year. So instead we have the dates to remember page. That goes into our important info and goals, the reading checklist. And again, with that extra page and the extra bookshelf page. Got the book series tracker, three quotes pages. Again, the new page for the pre-orders rather than the wish list. We've replaced it for the pre-orders. And then we have the new page for the author backlist. So you get a double page of that in here. And then we have the books to reread new page. Instead of it being a 2025 playlist, we just have it called my playlist and the months have been removed. That way, if you don't want it to be year specific, it doesn't have to be. You can uh, still do the same concept as the one I previously described in the dated version. It is open to being any month. You could still label them for months if that's what you want to do, but you don't have to. Uh, that goes into the movie tracker and the TV tracker. We have the blank books. This one doesn't have a year on it, as you can tell. So again, uh, leaving it undated so you can opt to start or finish whenever you want. Got your five star reads. And the A to Z again with the inclusion of the new numbers. Uh, this is just the fully booked reading challenge. And again, new on the cover challenge 
Reading Rainbow Challenge is the same, along with the genre, read through the ages, and the around the world reading challenge, all the same. Reading Goal Tracker, again, now goes up to 152 books, so you have extra room in here to hit that 150 capacity. Got the Battle of the Books, and the uh, this page is now blank. If you saw the dated version, uh, there's no months on here, and none of the dates are filled in here, so you don't have to start with January. You can fill this in as you want to. You have your monthly reading stats. So the months are not auto included here. So again, it doesn't have to be in order. You can put it whenever you want. And we did add the books hauled in this one as well. And the genre tally, we also don't have the months listed here. So you can add those in yourself. We have the pie charts, which again is something you do at the end of the year once you have all of your stats. We left the title blank on the undated version so that it's not year specific. And then we go into the blank dot grid pages. We have a couple of those before you get into a month. Uh, this is what a typical month will look like in the undated version. You will have artwork on the side. You will have a tab without a month on it. And you'll have a one page calendar with no month and no date. So you can add in all of that information yourself. I did in previous years have a little round bubble off to the right side at the top that you could put the number in. I have removed that. I had some people tell me that they wanted the dates on the left side. So now you can choose wherever the numbers go or if you're using stickers, you can put them wherever you want and you're not having a shape behind it. You go into the books to read. I mentioned in the dated version, we took the year off. Because this is an undated planner, I kept the year in in case you're using this over multiple years maybe and you want to keep track that way so the year is on the undated version so you can keep track of that and then we have the new releases again this is technically lined now but it is very very faint that leads us into the dashboard layout so this is an example of what the dashboard layout looks like it's the same as what we offered in the previous year. There haven't been any changes there. So it's the exact same layout where you've got an overview of your week here. And then you've got kind of a dashboard of your week here with a list format, some lined, and then three open spaces to do with as you choose. You will get five of those per month. And that will lead into your bookish haul and your reading wrap up, which is the same as in the dated version. You've got a dot grid and a lined page. Now in the undated, you still do get the quarterly check-in page every three months. Near the end, you will find, so their last quarterly check-in, you'll have your reading wrap-up, which again is not your specific. And you've got your coloring page. Book reviews are the exact same. You've got 150 of those. And again, what I mentioned in the dated version. You've got extra dot grid pages at the back and extra lined pages at the back. And again, no folder. There's no folder in the dated or the undated version. We are going to be releasing snap-in folders in a variety of new designs uh, towards the end of the year for those of you who do want a folder page. So that is what the undated planners like. And finally, I'm just going to show you what the monthly artwork looks like so if you want to be spoiled and don't want to see the monthly artwork um, now is your time to exit the video and thank you for watching but if you do want to see what all of the artwork looks like i'm going to go ahead and show you so we've already seen january you've got february with a nice little bouquet of books you've got march april May, June, which you may recognize this design. We've got July and August, September, which if you've seen the new novel companion covers, you may recognize these doodles. We've got October, again, another recognizable design like to include all of that so no matter what cover you choose you still get the artwork got november 
and December. And I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the flip through. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or DM me or leave a comment below and I will get to it. And once again, the pre-order will be October 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.